Hello, welcome back to Oliver Rain Knits. This is episode eight. If this is your first time here, my name is Tracy and I'm a maker based in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. It's been a minute since I've been here. I've been busy working and making lots of things and I have a lot to share today. So let's settle in. Uh, just a few knitted objects. I've been working on a few things, but there's one for sure that didn't work out and a couple of things that uh, I've been exploring. So let's start with my most recent finished object. These are, oh, I have a theory that if I make lots of woolly accessories, that uh, spring will come faster and then I won't need the woolly accessories anymore. So I've made two pairs of mittens and this is the first pair. Ta-da! Look at that. Why do I look at them? They don't really look identical. Maybe that's what happened. These are a pair of mittens called Snowdrift from Wool and Pine Designs. And they are made with my friend Brittany's Crux Fiber. Her Clune Forest DK, it's 100% uh, Alberta wool, and it is in her Aztec Gold colorway, and look at them. They're so pretty. Oh, they're, uh, oh, there's another little bit of hair on them. Uh, yeah, so these are some mittens. They have a uh, cable and moss stitch and a really long cuff, which you can fold over. But I also like the idea of having a really long cuff to fit under my jacket. So you can fold it like that. Or there you go. So cute, very cute. They are quite snug. I did have to go up uh, a few stitches with the mitten because the mitten thumb was really, really tight. And overall, though, it was a really easy pattern. And uh, yeah. I quite like them. I have very small hands, so it doesn't really take a lot of time to make a pair of mittens. So I've made two pairs. These ones are actually the ones I finished first, and these are the Fisherman's Mittens by Woodland Knits. And Woodland Knits is Liv Ullman, I think is her name. She is a German knitwear designer, and she actually released a sweater. Let me see if I can get the, the texture right. They're little tiny cables and she actually, oh, there you go. And she actually released the, I don't know if she knit, released the mitten pattern or the fisherman's raglan pattern first. I really like the fisherman's raglan pattern. So I thought I'd try the mittens just to see if I liked the texture and how easy I found it to work. And I really enjoyed it. This is my beloved knitted in yarn. Seriously, every time I use this yarn, I fall more in love with it. This color is called Ong, Ong, O-M-G-E. I'm not really sure how to pronounce that. I should have looked it up. But let's see here if you can see. It's a navy. And the funny thing with this yarn is that I'll get it and go, oh, oh you know, and just swoon over it. And then I'll put it in with my stash. And then uh, I pull it out again and really have a chance to look at all the dimensions in this color. I thought this was just a very basic navy, but oh, there's some bright royal blue and some grays and oh, I wish, I wish that I could show you all the colors in this. That's kind of a good representative, but I don't know. Anyway, they're very, very cozy. There are two versions of this mitten uh, with slight variations in the texture. I made version two and it's, it's a little bit more of a dense fabric and warmer. And I have worn these out and they are extremely warm. So since I finished these mittens, um, I still been wearing mittens when I go to work in the morning, but by the afternoon, I don't need them anymore. So I'm hoping that my theory holds and that spring is right around the corner. I love spring. I love the time when you're out and you can look at the little buds popping out on the trees and the little tulips poking their leaves out of the ground. And yeah, it's my favorite time of year. The snow is nice, but right now Calgary is not at its prettiest because the snow is all gone or it's melted mostly, except for these really big dirty piles and I don't know, spring on the prairies. 
We do have sunshine pretty much every day though, so that's definitely something. My last finished object is, oh, let's see. You might remember Freddy. <laughs> He's my little fox and he was made out of this book, Knitted Animal Friends by Louise Crowther. <laughs> Freddie has a girlfriend. Okay, maybe they're just close friends. I don't know. I think I see a little spark of romance between them. This is, ready for this? Harriet! H-A-R-E-I-E-T. Harriet? The hair? Get it? <laughs> oh, I'm a goofball. All right. She is made out of this book, and she is adorable. Her ears are a little floppy. I don't know how to make them stand up. And oh, just noticing that I really didn't do a very good job of sewing them. But I don't know. I think having floppy ears just gives her character. For some reason, she wants to always look that direction. So maybe she has a little bit of neck pain as well. The body of this hair is made with... Sheepies stone washed wool. It is cotton and acrylic, 78% cotton and 22% acrylic. And it is the recommended yarn for this pattern. And then I made all of her little accessories completely to the pattern uh, with some leftover sock yarn that I had in my stash. And then I added some little buttons also from my stash. She's not wearing underpants. I was going to make her some little underpants, but um, by the time I finished sewing her together and sewing on the buttons, I was kind of finished with her. She does have a cute little tail. <laughs> I just love her little cardigan. She's got a cute little short sleeve dress, and uh, yeah, there's carrots on them. So yeah, she's quite adorable, and I can really completely understand why Freddie is smitten with her. So this is Harriet and Freddie my two little animals. They are completely addictive and I can definitely see making a few more. So that is all of my finished objects. Oh, no, that's not true. I do have another finished object. Let me just grab it. In my last episode, I mentioned that I was going to be making a project bag. And I did. In fact, I made three. I had so much fun making the first one that I decided I had to make two more. One for each of my friends, Leanne and Brittany. And uh, I gave them to them when we had a little bit of a meetup in March. I hope they like their bag. I think they did. They actually hold a ton of stuff. And I am a gift giver. I love to give gifts to my friends to show them how much I care about them. So... Unfortunately, I did not take a picture, so I do have the fabrics that I used because I wanted to show that, but um, I don't actually have the bags. I will show you the bag that I made. Isn't it beautiful? This is with fabric that I purchased at a local fabric store called Out of Hound Fabrics. It's a quilt shop, and they actually have a huge line of bag making accessories, so they have the zippers, and then they also have these wires. I'm not going to take them out. They're sort of a half a rectangle, and they just open the bag up completely. So the inside is quilting weight fabric, and the outside is uh, canvas, and they're both from Rifle Paper Company. You get the free pattern, the retreat bag, with the purchase of these wire frames. It just opens up. I can honestly fit an entire sweater's worth of yarn in here, like just bananas. And then it zips up really cute. So I had so much fun. I really had to make one for each of my friends and uh, I gifted them. Okay. So I used these fabrics for my own and I really wanted to some do something that was more personalized for the two of them. So Leanne is the Nitty Stew. I've talked about her quite a bit here. She is probably my fiber BFF. She is definitely my fiber BFF. So this is the exterior fabric that I chose for her. She is a cat lover, so cats and coffee. I thought that was pretty perfect for her, and it's a really neutral color. She has cats, so she knows what 
cat hair is all about and I didn't want to get a straight black fabric because well animal hair shows on that so that's the exterior fabric and then for the inside let's see I think this is also this is also a rifle paper company fabric and I chose this isn't it pretty it looked so good with the exterior fabric so I have lots left over, not enough for a full bag, but I will definitely have this fabric in my stash for some other projects that I am working on. So that is the one bag that I made. It looks exactly like this, but with the other fabrics. And then for my friend Brittany at Crux Fibers, this is the outside fabric that I chose. Isn't it pretty? Brittany really likes neutrals, and she's all about sheep, and she has, I think, cats too, and a bunny, and uh, I really wanted to find something really that suited her, or that fit within her uh, aesthetic, but when I saw this, I thought it was pretty perfect, especially when I found this fabric to go on the inside. There's fish. So Brittany is up in Whitehorse, Yukon Territories, and they seem to be really connected with nature. So I thought that it would probably be a place where they fished. So I thought these little fish fishes on the fabric was really, really cute. And it goes really well together. And then I got a zipper that was this color, so it just popped. And uh, I think it turned out so pretty. So I really should get some pictures and see if I could put them up on here, but I don't know. That's work, right? <laughs> so those are my finished objects. For real, it's time. Now I am working on a few knitted things. And one of the things I want to talk about is this sweater. I really thought this was going to be a finished object. Because if you can see here, it's actually almost done. I've got the body knit and the sleeves. And uh, I think it's really pretty. The issue I have with this is that it looks terrible on me. I'll just take it off the mannequin and show. I'm not going to put it on because you're going to have to take my word for it that it is really not a good fit. You start by making this really wide v-neck. And I kind of had my doubts whether it was going to work. I saw somebody else's project on Ravelry using knitted in yarn. This is what is, is the pattern is made with. Um, this is the Manarola by Boyland Knitworks. And I kind of thought maybe the neckline would be too wide, but uh, I really liked the way the maker knit hers using the knitted in yarn. So I persevered, despite my myths things kept going and yeah it is just terrible I tried to to my, maybe uh, live with it but I knew that it would never get worn and Newton it is such a wonderful yarn that I wanted to make sure that I made full use of every scrap so I used let's see one two three four five colors I think. So I used two different blues, a, a beigey, a cream colored, and then this brown for the main part of it. And I love the pattern play, the color play on this sweater. I just don't like the fit. One of the issues is that the arm comes down too low. It actually comes down probably half the way to my waist. And it just completely flattens everything out and is very unattractive. So what I have decided to do is to cut the top part off. I'm going to carefully unravel the yarn and re-knit it following a raglan pattern. Um, I haven't really found the pattern yet. I think there's one by, uh, what is it, Egg? Your knits, I have to put the name up here because I don't really know how to pronounce it, where I can take a already made pattern and just adapt Andrea's 
or sorry, not Andrea's, Caitlin's color work onto that. So I'm going to keep the body, and probably this is the right length, and then just knit up. Uh, I don't think there's a way to actually keep the two parts together without completely re-knitting the top part because it just, it's just way, 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 way too long. I think this pattern was actually, I actually I know it was made for a lighter weight yarn and not really for a spring or summer weight sweater, but I don't know. Disappointing, but we all learn and I just want to be transparent in that I make mistakes. Not everything that we show here is uh, not a result of trial and error. So for every finished object, there's probably three that I've struggled with and had to remake several times. So that is my Manarola. It is really, really pretty. I uh, am looking forward to finishing it, but I think I'm going to just let it hibernate for a bit. I'll fit it back here on my mannequin so I can admire the color work at least, if not the fit. It doesn't look so bad on her, but I don't know. This did not work. And if it doesn't work, it's not going to get worn, and then it's just a waste. So that is my failed work in progress. I think I'm going to just let it hibernate maybe until the fall, or I don't know, maybe I'll pick it up. Who knows? I do have a lot of other things I'm working on, so it's not that I have a lack of things to do. My next work in progress is a very special one, and I think this would almost classify as being an heirloom knit. So, Brittany, this is the Brittany Crux Fibers episode. So she is so special. We call her the Wool Whisperer, the Wise Woman of Wool. She is so knowledgeable and so passionate. And having lunch with her and watching her talk about wool and just about life, and she is so amazing. So she mentioned that we were the friends she never knew she needed. We have a little group of us, and yeah, she's a friend I never knew I needed. Just like Leanne, just, I'm so lucky to be surrounded by these wonderful, inspiring, kind makers, knitters. I've been looking for this community for so long, and yeah, they just kind of complete my, my little circle. There's a couple of others that live in Ontario, and then one other uh, woman that lives in Whitehorse, and I'm so lucky that we are a community. So enough about that. So Brittany is very close with the shepherdess from Crocus County Shepherds in Caroline, Alberta. And this is the little tag. So what I purchased from her is a fade kit of low mileage wool. And this is the 2022 fall clip of the Gotland BFL crossbreeds at Crocus Country Fibers. I'm not sure what, what she's called exactly. I'll put her name up here. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a set of six shades, natural shades of wool, going from very light to almost black. And it was an investment. But Brittany purchases the majority of the clip from Crocus County every season. And she sends it to a mill in Wellington, Ontario, the Wellington Fiber Mill. And then she gets it sent back to her and she creates these kits and sometimes she sells them individually so you can really make very special garments. So I purchased a kit. I used my Canadian yarn and maker exemption for 2023 uh, Bust My Balls Challenge. I'll talk about that in a bit. And what I'm making with this is the Find Your Fade Shawl by Andrea Mowry. And this is the beginning of it. So this bottom part is the very darkest shade. And it is, this is the remainder of the ball. And then it gets 
lighter progressively. So this is the next one that's going to be blended in. And then there are three more shades that just get progressively lighter. So that's the one that goes in between. Actually, those ones look very similar, but when you hold everything together, they are indeed a fade. And Brittany brought her Find Your Fade shawl down with her. And then Carmen of Knitting a Good Yarn podcast, she showed off hers on her U channel a few months ago. And yeah, I'm really, really excited to make this. I did work on this the other night. <laughs> I find you have to pay attention a little bit because there is a central decrease let's call a, what do you call it, like a, a rib or a spine down the middle of it. And then you have to remember to put your eyelets. So it's garter stitch with uh, bits of lace and then more garter stitch. And then I'm just about ready to start another piece of lace. And then you will melt the two colors together. So you see the stripes here, it just sort of blends from the darker to the lighter shade. And that's going to continue through the whole shawl. And it is very big, and it's going to be very warm. And I am absolutely going to love it. And uh, when I work on this yarn, I feel the love of my friends around me. I know that sounds kind of cheesy, but I do. It's very special yarn. The tags, each tag has um, the fiber content, which is Gotland BFL, but it has the name of the sheep that it comes from. So this one is the light gray, probably this one, I think. And it's from Cecil W and Weather, Cecil and Maz. Those are the weather sheep. And this one, is the warm tone white and this is Vadur and rose and isn't that amazing so i'm going to keep these tags with it and every time i look at this shawl and wear this shawl i'm going to be able to think of my friend Brittany and the love that she has for wool and um, her relationship with crocus county so that is one of my works in progress it's actually successful and I have a couple of other things, but I'm not quite ready to show them. What I will show you is the progress I've made on a quilt. I think it might have been last episode that I talked about a quilt that I had planned using some fabrics I purchased on a trip to Maui a few years. Actually, it was almost exactly a year ago. This is the Celtic Crossing quilt that I purchased at my local quilting store. And what I'm using is batik fabrics that I purchased at a quilt store in Maui. And I have been able to piece the entire top together. This is supposed to be a large throw. And it actually, <laughs> it's probably a twin size or even double size quilt. It is so big. But I'll, I'll post a picture of it. But this is my quilt. So I've done the quilt sandwich using some backing fabric and uh, yeah oh my gosh you guys I was working on another project bag from another pattern which I'll show in a moment and I had run out of the interface for that pattern I was cutting everything out and I realized I was short and I realized that I wasn't going to be able to get to the the fabric store for a couple of days so I thought well I can knit. But then I thought, oh, well, why don't I just try making one block of the quilt? I had cut out all the colored pieces and uh, I just had stacks of them sitting around. So I cut out some white pieces and started sewing them together according to the pattern. I actually laid out everything and I played around with it a bit. I thought, okay, I'm going to just, just dive in. So I did. And then I had so much fun making the first block that I made another one and I just kept going. And probably two or three days it took me to put all the squares together. I mean, I was going. It wasn't really very hard. It's not perfectly pieced. Don't look too closely because it is, uh, my stitching is a bit of a mess and covered with batting lint 
but uh, overall I think it's really pretty. It's supposed to be a gradient and I've sort of followed a vague rainbow pattern. So it goes from dark blue to sort of this violet red color. It's not quite a rainbow and it gets sort of progressively lighter and then I go to this rainbow and then blend back in some red. So it is a gradient, but I just think it's so much fun. Now the back is also a showstopper. So this is a fabric by Kate Bassett that I purchased at another quilting store for my back. It came in 44 inch uh, widths, so I had to piece two of them together. But the pattern was quite busy so that I uh, wasn't really too worried about having a seam running down. So I've done, I'm doing this in a cross hatch quilting pattern. So you start by doing vertical lines. Let's see if you can. Vertical lines. Have a little bit of ink from my uh, marking pen, which is just water soluble. Do the vertical lines and then the horizontal lines. And then I'm going to do uh, two sets of horizontal. So going, ah, <laughs> going this way and then this way. So that is my quilt. And then I also purchased. this fabric to be the binding. So when it's done, the quilt, well, have this is the back and then the front, and then I will do a very, let's see if I can fold it into a little strip, a very small binding around the whole thing. So yeah, it's not perfect, but this is fabric that I bought when my husband and I were traveling to celebrate our 50th birthday and our 20th anniversary and I think that it's a good way to remember it. I could briefly consider giving it to my daughter but I'm going to keep it for myself. I'm selfish. <laughs> so that is my uh, Celtic cross quilt. So the pattern that I had to abandon because I ran out of materials is another bag and this is actually a tote bag by Amy Butler. She is a sewing pattern and fabric designer and uh, I actually had another one that I was wanting to make but this one seemed a little simpler. Let's see. It is the Sweet Harmony handbag and tote and I'm going to make the tote bag, this one right here. It's a little bit more complicated than my retreat bag but I think I'm up for the challenge. I purchased two more rifle paper company material. So this is the outside. It is another rifle paper company canvas. And then this is the inside. This is on the sale rack and I think it matches so well. So I think it's gonna be really striking. And then I'm going to use this pattern as a, the piping for it as well. So that is something that I really wanna have finished. By the end of April, I have made myself a couple of very lofty goals to finish my quilt as well as finish this bag. I'm not sure if I'm going to get it done because I am devoting May to making miniatures. Miniature May! I have two dollhouses that are in, well, very early stages of completion. I was really going gung-ho on them last year and... Yeah, I kind of ran out of steam. I was too busy with work. And I'd really like to get one done because they're very special. I am customizing both kits, one more so than the other. And the one that I'm customizing is what I'm calling the Contemporary House. Uh, it's a kit by, what is it called? Uh, Real Good Toys. That is actually the name, Real Good Toys. And it is their contemporary ranch dollhouse. It's an 80s style dollhouse, which really wasn't what I was going for. So what I have decided that the house I'm building is a renovated contemporary ranch. So I'm going towards more of a mid-century modern theme in it. 
as if somebody had come into that 1980s home and totally renovated it according to their own style. So it's going to be a little bit eclectic and I've taken a lot of inspiration off of Pinterest. So I'm devoting May to completing that dollhouse. It's a big job, so hopefully I'll get some type of completion done. And uh, yeah, we'll see. And hopefully next episode, I'll be able to show that off. No promises, but that's what I'm hoping for. If I just devote my spare time to finishing that, then hopefully it will be done and then I can decorate it. My other dollhouse, I'll probably wait for another time, though once I start working on things, I often really get carried away and then I can't stop. <laughs> Anybody else like that? I, I have a, an obsessive personality, <laughs> in case you didn't notice. In keeping with that theme of obsession, not miniatures, I do have one other project that I'm working on, and this is something sort of... I don't know if you remember this from a few episodes ago. This is a little basket that I made uh, using quilting techniques and English paper piecing. And it just kind of ignited my love of sewing again. And what I realized, even though I love working on that other quilt, I really love hand sewing. It just, I feel like it's more precise. It means I can bring it along with me. And I don't have to worry about if I run out of thread on my sewing machine or I have to re-thread a bobbin or something like that. So probably three or four years ago, I was at Out of Hand Quilting and I found this pattern. It's called Smitten and it is by Lucy Carson Kingwell. If anybody is a fan of hand piecing or paper piecing, they might have heard... Jen of Jen Kingwell, and I'm not sure how Lucy Carson Kingwell is related, maybe some sort of in-law, but she created this pattern, and it is for, you could use machine piecing, but I am hand piecing this quilt, and I have a huge stash of small-scale prints that I've accumulated when I used to make a lot of doll clothes for my uh, slide stalls that I showed a couple episodes ago and I just thought it was a really good way to make use of those fabrics and also another way to keep my hands busy because God knows I don't have enough to keep me busy. So these are squares. So the way I do my hand piecing is I take this the pattern and it tells you what shapes you need for each square. And I went online and I ordered this kit. It's perfect patchwork templates. It's the recommended template. And they are these clear plastic templates that I use. I actually just trace around them with a pen, uh, a heat soluble pen, and make the shapes. And then I trace a quarter inch seam allowance on each piece. It's a little bit of time intensive project, but I really enjoy it. So there are, let's see, one, two, three shapes. And within each shape, you can, there are lines that you can use to cut out smaller pieces. So for example, this could be a diamond shape, but it can also be a triangle. Same with this one. This could be half a triangle, a large diamond, or it could be a hexagon. And then this one is a hexagon, but it also could be a half hexagon. So that is just really fun. And I started working on them, I don't know, last year when I was still living in Vancouver. And I just set it aside because I really had too much going on. And I just started doing them recently again. So there are large and small hexagon shapes and each one is going to be a little different. These are all variations of the same small hexagon. So 
This one has a center hexagon and then triangles and then these diamond shapes. So with the half inch seam allowance, I use my running stitch and just sew them all together and then I press them flat. So there's that. And these are all fabrics I had in my stash. I kind of just had fun mixing and matching them. And I think it's going to make a really fun PC quilt. So there's that one. And then I just love picking out little elements in them like these roses or whatever that is. And then this one has an owl on it. And then I have a whole bunch of large ones as well. I won't show you all of them. I'll just pick out my favorites. Yeah, I love this one. Love that big pop of red right in the middle. This one's really cute because it's got little chicks on it. And then these, this orange fabric has little foxes. And I think there's a bunny. This one has ladybugs on it. My daughter, I call her ladybug. She's an adult, but she used to love catching ladybugs. This one, I love this one because it is foxes and rabbits and butterflies and birds. So yeah, this is just something I picked up. This is a slightly different shape, just with different colors of um, the diamonds go together in this star shape. And then this is my little favorite foxy print. Let's see what else. So many, many, many. Oh, here's another one with just the mixed prints. So yeah, I'm having so much fun. I spent an afternoon earlier this week just printing not printing, but tracing out a bunch of shapes and stacking them up. And just when I want to take a break from my knitting or from my quilt or from my, whatever else I'm working on, I'll just put in some time. Oh, look at this one. This one's so cute. Apples. And little mice. <laughs> yeah, they're all so cute. So yeah, it's a great way to make use of all my scrappy fabrics. And I think it will just be a really cool project to have. And eventually I'll sew everything together and then do the same thing I'm doing with my other quilt. I'll put a backing on it and then I will actually quilt the fabrics together and then add a backing. But there's no time on on that. That is just something I feel like working on. So those are all my works in progress and my finished objects. Now, I've already said I'm going to be doing Miniature May this year. I will also be knitting during that time and probably doing my quilt squares. I won't stop doing the other things, but my focus will be on miniatures and I really can't wait to show that off. I am really looking forward to making some warm weather items. Some I really want to make some summer weight tops. There's a few patterns that I'm looking at. I uh, can't remember the name of them right at the moment, so I'm not even going to go there. I'll show them next time. That's okay. Life hasn't really been that exciting for me, although I did get to have my lunch meet up with my girlfriends, which was really fun. I've been working lots. It's just a period of my rotation that I've been working a lot of day shifts, and I don't really have a lot of energy to do anything else after that. I do have another upcoming trip with my friend Leanne and her sister Wendy, and looking forward to that. We are going to spend, uh, my husband and I will spend a week in Fernie before that so that we could get some house projects done in the condo. Then what else do I have going on? I have my 51st birthday coming up in a few weeks. Tomorrow we get to go to a Shiba Inu meetup. So I've never been to one before. Everybody in Calgary in the surrounding area, well not everybody, anybody who wants to will be bringing their Shiba Inu to one of the local dog parks and I am so excited. I've always, always, always wanted to take my dogs to one and now that I live in Calgary where they actually happen, I get to go. It's more exciting for the owners rather than the dogs. I keep thinking that my dogs will be excited to see one of their relatives. We actually were going for a walk recently and we met a Shiba Inu who was my dog Kit's grandmother. Her grandmother just yelled at her, so I guess memory's short when you're a dog. I don't know. 
I also have booked a couple of trips in the fall, which I am so excited about. Leanne and I are going to take a trip to visit Brittany and Loretta from, oh, I can't remember her YouTube channel name. Oh, I'm so sorry, Loretta. I'll put it up on the screen. So we are going to be traveling to Whitehorse at the end of September, I'm calling it a business trip. And uh, I think it's going to be so much fun. Neither, I think Leanne's been there as a flight attendant, uh, but she's never actually been in the city. And it's my first time up in the Yukon. So I'm really excited to see it. And then I have also decided to go to Rhinebeck this year, the New York Sheep and Wool Festival that pretty much any knitter knows about. I'm expected to be a bit overwhelmed. I can be a bit introverted and a little bit overwhelmed by crowds, but I think the opportunity to go and spend time with other knitters, I'm going with Carmen and Jackie from Knitting a Good Yarn podcast. And I think it's just a really, I'm really excited about it. I cannot even believe that I'm going. I can't wait. So I'm looking forward to meeting other knitters. I'm hoping to meet some knitwear designers. I'm not really planning to buy a whole lot, but uh, let's be real. I like to buy yarn, so I probably will come home with maybe a small suitcase full of stuff. We'll see. Oh, before I forget, Busting My Balls 2023. How did I do? Well, let me see if I wrote it down. I think I did. Where did I put that? All right. So I added up all the yarn, all the projects that I made using yarn out of my stash. And the final total was 3,212 grams or just over three kilos. So that gave me about $321 to spend. If you remember, we take 10% of our grams, convert that to cold hard cash, and we buy whatever our hearts desire in terms of yarn or fiber. Well, yeah, friends, I fell off the wagon. So I have used my Canadian Wool and Maker clause twice. So I purchased my fade kit from Brittany and I purchased some other yarn, the uh, Clune Forest as well as some Surrey Silk and some of her Unsparn as well. So that was one of the clauses that I used. And then I had the Newtoden exception. So yeah, I'll show that yarn later. I got this glorious teal blue color and I'm looking forward to working with that. But this isn't all about my acquisitions, so I'll, I'll show that on a later episode. And then I did purchase some other things through Art of Yarn that was actually my busting my balls reward, but I went over my limit and spent $475 instead of $320, just to be transparent. But some of those yarns were to be used to finish existing projects, such as my Little Dude cardigan, and to make some summer garments. And then I purchased a set of knitting needles and a set of tips for my chow goos. I will actually talk about some needles I purchased uh, as an alternative to the chow goos that I love in a later episode. I just started working with them, and I'm not sure how I feel about the needles yet. I'll give you the name and everything later. And then I purchased a, the um, line magazine for the winter version. And uh, there's a sweater out of that that I want to make. And then I just purchased some other yarn because I thought it was pretty to make some summer garments. And then we have another exception. It's called the LYS exception. I uh, went out again because I really wanted some summer weight yarn and I purchased some yarn at uh, Pudding Yarn here in Calgary and some Rowan yarn and anyway like I said I'm not all about the acquisitions but I also want you to know that I am also buying some things. I'm really going to tighten up the purse strings in terms of buying fiber in the later spring 
But what I want to emphasize is that my primary goal was to move some of my stash out of my stash and onto my body, onto my hands, onto my head, onto somebody else's body. Uh, so it wasn't just sitting there and then I was just adding more on top of that. Now, honestly, I per probably purchased more than three kilos of yarn. So I'm really not anywhere in ahead in terms of using my my uh, the weight of yarn that I have or the bulk of the yarn that I have, but I've kind of shifted things around and I feel good about that. I have been pretty mindful with the purchases that I'm making with the expectation that I, you know, maybe have bought a few more things than I need, but I don't know. We have to reward each other, right? Or reward ourselves. Who else is going to do it? And yeah, I work for my, my, uh, I work for my hobby and my hobby enables me to work. It gives me the stress relief and the relaxation that I need to be able to do my job. So there you go. That's all the justification. And most of my purchases I ran by my busting my balls buddy Leanne. Oh, actually there's one more thing. There's one thing I want to share. This is a little stitch marker that Brittany included with my fade kit. And let's see if it will show up. Can you see that? Little sheep. So this is a stitch marker, Progress Keeper, by Kraken Made. Treasures Handmade by Eden. She is on Instagram as Crafting Kraken Made. She has a YouTube channel, Let's Get Kraken, and she's krakenmade.com. She hand paints these stitch markers. Let's see. Mm, yeah. These little sheeps, she does so many cute little scenes. So yeah, thank you, Brittany. And thank you, Eden, for making such beautiful stitch markers. I haven't actually taken it off the card yet because I'm afraid of losing it, which is silly because it should be used, right? Should be able to enjoy it every day. So that is all that I have to share. I, uh, yeah, I'm enjoying the sunshine. I am really enjoying getting outside and seeing some little signs of life. My dogs and I went hunting for some little tulips poking their heads out of the soil. We just saw a few leaves, a few leaves that were nibbled on by some local wildlife hares. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to moving into the spring more and just getting out. I My daughter is graduating from university this year. It's a really, really big milestone in her life and for our family and just looking forward to moving through the next season of life. So thank you so much for watching today. I hope you're doing well and to everyone, happy making.